Hey guys, on this video we are going to talk about backend development and how you can become a backend software developer. Every website can be split up into two parts, the front end and the back end. The front end is all the visual stuff you see on the web page and the back end is what saves and manages your data. For example, if you are on Jumia.com, the backend will store your order history, your profile, it will load search results, and much more. In this video, we are going to take a look at the technologies that are used in the backend of a website, and in another video, we will explore the front-end technologies. As an example, let's say that we are on Jumia.com and we do some shopping, and now we are ready to make an order. When I click place order, what happens? We are going to start from the ground up. Any computer that's connected to the internet, including your computer and my computer, can send a message across the internet to another computer. That's also connected to the internet. So to, simpl to simplify things, Jumia has a computer in their office building somewhere, and our computer is going to send a message containing our order that Jumia computer. In this scenario, the computer that is sending the message is called the client, and the computer that is receiving the message is called the server. But before this happens, computers, they cannot receive messages from the internet by default. We have to program them to be able to receive messages. To do that, we need a backend programming language. Almost every programming language is has a feature that turns a computer into a server and allows it to receive messages. Popular backend programming languages are Python, C Sharp, PHP, Java, and many more. However, using a backend programming language by itself is actually really difficult and requires a huge amount of code. So there are tools that we use to help with this, a backend framework and a package manager. A backend framework helps us create a server much less and with a lot less code. Each backend programming language has a few different frameworks to choose from, but the most popular ones are Express.js for JavaScript, Python Django, Ruby on Rails, and Java Springs. In the backend, we also use a lot of code that other people have written called packages do common tasks like doing calculations, talking to a database and setting up a user login and authentication. We typically use a lot of packages in our backend and in order to install and manage all these packages, we use something called a package manager. Each language has its own package manager. The most popular ones are npm for JavaScript, pip for Python, uh, bundler for Ruby, and Maven for Java. These are all the technologies we need to create our backend server. The next problem we have is we need somewhere to store the data for our website. Going back to our Jumi example, data could mean our user data like the login information, order history, as well as uh, data for all the products that are being sold on Jumia, the descriptions, the ratings, and the reviews. To do this, we use a database. A database helps us store and manage data. It's just a piece of software that usually uh, runs on a different computer and we have to do some setup so that our backend can communicate with the database. The most popular databases are MySQL, Postgres, and MongoDB. All right, so if you're just starting out, this is basically all you need for the backend. You can build most of your projects with just a server and a database. For example, here is how our Jumia scenario could work. When the customer places an order in the backend, the front end sends a message containing the order to the backend. The backend then saves the order to a database and sends back a message to the front end confirming that the order was created. The message to the front end sends to the message at the front end sends to the backend is known as a request. 
So that's the message that is sent from the front end to the back end. And the message that the back end sends back is known as a response. This is called a request response cycle. And this is generally how web applications work. Now that you have seen the overall flow, we are going to dive deeper and take a look at what's inside a request. Here's a simplified example of a request to create a Jumia order. If we read over it, we can see that it's actually really easy to understand. We have the items that we ordered, the quantities and some other information about our Amazon order, like the payments. At the top, we have the type of the requests, the domain name and the URL path. This describes where this request is going and what type of request this is. First of all, Jumia, the company, has bought the domain name jumia.com and they configured it so that any requests going to jumia.com will be redirected to that server in their office building. So that's why we are sending this request to jumia.com. The type and the URL path identify what kind of request this is. So in this example, this is a post request to create orders. In the backend, we use our programming language and backend frameworks to define what type of requests are allowed and how we should handle these requests. For example, we can allow a post slash orders request and whenever we get a post slash orders a request we will create an order using our programming language and use it to and save it to our database. We can also allow a get a get slash order request and in this case we will retrieve the order history from the database and send it back as a response. Another example is a delete slash order request where we will cancel the order. So this list of all the different types of requests that the backend allows is called an API, which stands for Application Programming Interface. The API is one of the most important uh, concepts in backend programming. If you send a request that is not allowed by the API, the API will not respond with uh, the, uh, the, the backend will respond with an error. So you'll get an error response. So, we mentioned earlier that we can identify requests using a type and a URL path. There are several types we can choose from, such as post, get, put, and delete, and the URL path can be anything we want. So, why in this example do we choose post slash orders? This is just a naming conversion convention for our request. And this naming convention is called REST. In full, it's representational state transfer. So I'll be doing a more detailed tutorial on how to create REST APIs using PHP. And I'm going to be using the Laravel framework. So as you have seen, backend development is not so complicated. And I'm going to be doing a series on how you can be able to develop APIs using uh, PHP Laravel. So make sure that you subscribe. And uh, it's my hope that you have found this uh, video helpful in your journey to becoming a software developer. So subscribe. If you have any question, leave it on the comment section. And I'll be able to give you a response the quickest time possible. Thank you for watching.